Hello, hi everybody that's coming in. Hello, hi everybody. Hello, how hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. And how everybody that's here is doing well. So we have William McIntosh that's going to be joining me this evening. And he's all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. So he's going to be talking a little bit about himself, him being a fashion designer, and so many fun things we have in store for you this evening. So please make sure to come in share this live with all your friends and family and give me just a second i'm going to pin this so hello all right so how's everybody doing today i hope you guys are doing well uh here in new york city we are in phase four so more things has opened and additionally that means that you know different things are opening up and different things are happening here in New York so definitely exciting so I'm spotting a new look today I'm doing some glasses <laughs> my eye oh that's a long story for another day but I hope you all are doing well it's very nice to see you all and thank you so much for coming into this live so just a few minutes here uh, we're going to wait for our guests to come into this live so okay <laughs> oh my gosh you guys are so funny hope you all are doing well and what did you guys do today definitely talk to me in the comments below we have a fun live feel for you all our guest speaker is going to be joining us from trinidad again so exciting so definitely really really good and then we also have another live that's going to be happening thursday with wayne from royal ties so that's going to be exciting our guest is here so so excited for you to meet him so it's gonna be great <laughs> i'm done i don't even want to hear anything about food right now yes hello hi hey what's up what's hi, going on hey. nice to see you how are you doing i'm good i'm good good, I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. First things first, give me one second. I want to set a timer um, for real quick to make sure I don't go over on time. So we're good to go. You so hear first, me, right? Yes, I hear you good. Do you hear me good? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm, okay, yeah. let me make sure I turn up the volume on my end because my phone is sticking up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have William McIntosh here, who is one of my prolific designers from Trinidad and Tobago. Yay. So I want everybody to come into the comments and say hello. Make sure to share this live with all your friends, your family, and most of all, enjoy this conversation that we're going to be having this evening. So first things first, we're going to definitely jump into this interview. So I know who you are, but please tell us what is your name and also the name of your brand. Well, my name is David William McIntosh. The name of my brand is William McIntosh. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So how did you come with the name of your brand? Is it a little bit of adding who you are to the brand? Excuse me? Sorry? How did you get the name of your brand? Was it adding a little bit of your name and just kind of combining it to just come up with the name of the overall brand? Well, um... I don't know. It, it, I just I wanted I wanted I wanted something that really represented me, and I wanted my name to be more like more or less like the headline of my brand and my personality. So I decided. Well, William is my great grandfather's name, and um, well, Macintosh, my name <laughs> from my dad. So um, I just decided to you know incorporate the William Macintosh. It it it, it kind of has like a, a nice ring to it. It rules. You know your, your your tongue easily, so it's William McIntosh. Yeah, it does. I really, yeah. I really, and I I love the name, and I think like you mentioned, being able to have who you are and also who your family represents in your name as well. So yeah, I think that's such a great concept, and it really definitely shows where you're coming from. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> so tell us a little about your fa your background in fashion. Um. Well, I started my practice in fashion in Trinidad. Um, I probably started about when I was about uh, 18 or wow. 19. 
um, I remember just wearing like, you know, eclectic pieces that people wouldn't like look at and just finding a cool way um, to piece them together. Um, at that time, a little later on, I began to like practice, um, not practice, sorry, participate in like local shows, yeah. um, local, you know, fashion shows, Red Runway, um, Tobago Fashion Week. Tobago has wow. a fashion week. Well, at that time, um, you know, the shows really propelled the brand and propelled me in a, in a way where a lot of the local artists, um, like Kess and Ola Tunji and yeah. other artists reached out because they liked, you know, what I was doing. They liked wow. the brand aesthetic. Yes. And, you know, like it, 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 it the rest was history. It, it, it really like propelled, propelled me, propelled the brand. It opened doors um, to really like expand in fashion. Um, I, I I remember for in 2015, uh, Soka Monarch. Soka Monarch is like a big thing in Trinidad. It's like this big international um, theater show where yes. it's Soka, Soka oriented. And uh, I did the outfit, I did the wardrobe design for Ola Tunji Airwood. Wow, that's so great. Yeah, it was it was like a golden um uh, it was for his at that time it was for, for his hit sing um song Ola. Oh um, yes. And he won he won that year. He won wearing, you know, my designs. It was a whole team effort. What that's wonderful. And the rest was history, you know, like people he, people heard about it on TV and the news and local radio stations were saying Ola Tunji was the best dress artist for that season. And, and, you know, things things just yeah. took off. And um, that's amazing. Yeah. And I, I, I did some studying in FIT. Um, I went to FIT to, to study um, garment construction and um, fashion design. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. First and foremost, I just want to say congratulations to you and your accomplishments in, just, in such a short time, especially dressing Ola Tunje, who is a great, 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 great soca artist. And yeah. I remember that outfit, and that outfit was grand. Um, if you can, send me a picture of that outfit. I'll be able to post it on my story so people no can you know, reference back to you and say, well, what? It was that he was wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, it nice. It was a good time. It was a good time. It's wonderful. I did have one small question, and that was, how was how was your feelings when you were participating in Tobago Fashion Week? And for everybody that is watching, Tobago Fashion Week is very big, another big fashion week compared to what is here in the United States is New York Fashion Week. Such yeah. a great experience. How was your feelings? Were you excited to see your garments come to life on the runway? Um, I remember that time, the last time uh, I participated, it was 2016. And it was my second time doing the show. Wow. And I remember distinctly that I I had a, a specific like budget for my collection and it ran this is a crazy story like I ran out of the budget I ran, I ran out of money oh. and I remembered at that time I didn't know much about garment construction so I um prior to that I bought an industrial machine and I I went I was like you know what let me let me just figure this out now because I, I, I already submitted um, to do the show, to participate in, um, in the show. And my money was, it, it was done. And I, I remember that week before um, Delia Allen, Delia Allen, um, she, she had like a one-on-one, -on -one, um, a one-on-one -on -one session, like, one-on-one -on -one sessions for, for like a weekend co collection. Right. And, and I, I just built like, like this crazy confidence uh, um, we're within and I just decided to like make, make the rest of pieces and like, like, like construct the rest of pieces that I needed to, to right. finish the collection. Right. And that was my first time sewing shirts all the shirts for that collection were sewn by me, somebody that was inexperienced at that time. And it came out really well. And I remember doing the show 
it was let me see if I could, I could remember the name it was um saga boy and dungarees that was the theme of the show so wow. there's a lot of denim and and you know um uh cotton and stuff um so like i i didn't even know that that was like the theme before i did the collection right and what i was the last i was the second to last person to show i was like i was the second to last person to showcase right and the collection my collection was titled the western movement it was inspired by all western films um i remember uh when i was younger my mother always used to be looking at these western films and like oh my god i fed up <laughs> and um and i don't know it, it just it just kind of like like it ignited this flame in yes. terms of like this is what i want to do and i did the collection and it got a standing ovation like people wow. stood up people ran on stage like picture picture this right my last walk the models are walking down for the last walk and people are literally like in the it seated ran up on stage to shake my hand and congratulate me like it was so well done and wow and you should have showed last instead yeah. of second to last should have been the climax of the show and I was like oh good thank you thank you thank you and it was a good experience it was it was really it really it really like moved me to see that um you know like me being in my creative uh, space and element I'm able right. to move people and I'm able yes. to 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 touch people in that way when it comes to fashion i think that like that's my yeah. gift um to 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 do collections do these pieces that speak to people on an emotional level so right. i remember the show it was it was good it was a, it was a good it was a good show that's wonderful i'm very happy yeah. and thank you again for sharing that story we did have some comments i didn't i didn't want to interrupt while you were talking so this is yeah. my black hat family trinity the bone hey lashon hey lashon um, what's up um, thank you said, man. check out the homie william greatness mosea thank you for coming in everybody thank you you know for supporting william as a great designer and i want to say thank you so much for sharing that story with us because yeah. i think sometimes even even if we're in a creative dynamic or depending on what we're doing we get so intimidated to say oh my gosh we can't do it and sometimes you just have to you know put your best foot forward have that belief have that faith and if you know that you're good at something that confidence will kick in and so you can yeah. be able to accomplish it so i i want to say thank you for sharing that story with mm -hmm. us i definitely maybe there's some highlights or something so we could be able to check that out so yeah. sounds good and um i know that you said that you're based in trinidad and tobago so tell us a little bit about i know i know personally that you're from brooklyn so tell us a little bit about that background um okay well i was born in brooklyn um in the 90s um 90s baby um uh uh east new york um uh, brookdale hospital shout out brooklyn um I came my mother brought me down me and my sister and I down to Trinidad when I was 3 years old. So at that time like I was like traveling back and forth back and forth every every summer I would go up you know uh, to see family and what not. And um yeah it was like just being able to to travel to be exposed back and like every year it really right. like played a huge part in in my development. Right. And, um, well, now I'm well. Seeing that uh, the borders are locked down in Trinidad, I really can't. Well, nobody could travel now. So I'm currently located in East Trinidad, um, Palm Studios. That's the name of my workshop, my room, my studio, where I create all of these cool things. Um, yeah, Palm Studios, East Trinidad. Wonderful. East Trinidad. Yes, if you're in Trinidad and you want something nice to wear, make sure to yeah, yeah. talk to William. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us. So, I just have a quick question about that. So, I know that you're mentioning that hey, you know, uh being from Brooklyn and being from Trinidad, was there anything in both environments that had really inspired your fashion? Um you can repeat the question again yeah Sorry, so is there anything for example like was there things that you saw growing up in brooklyn and also growing up in trinidad that inspired your fashion like for example i know the caribbean has 
bright colors and different yeah. hues does that inspire you as well um i i well i'm i'm untraditional i tend to pull inspiration from things that people would normally pull inspiration um from so but i could say i would say um my travels uh to to, to new york being able being blessed enough to experience the um the best of both worlds right. um traveling to or well, traveling back and forth um i would say new york new york really inspired me as a uh, person as a creative um i can remember when i was younger like uh well a lot of a lot of a lot of um downloads came at like at, at an early age that really like build the structure for me and you know, right. my creative flow um just the people that you see i remember like up on manhattan um 34th street going straight up i remember i used to, I used to be you know there a lot with my mother and family and and sightseeing and whatever and i always remember these just seeing like these different ethnic groups of people from all over and and it was just so inspiring to see the culture the right. colors um and it had a and 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 the the the, the silhouettes yes. had a, like a huge part to play um traveling to new york um, yes yeah i, I think that's great oh, i'm sorry to interrupt i was about to say i completely agree with you i think that even with your creative eye and seeing yeah. all of these different things whether it be in trinidad or whether it be in new york and still being able to use that perspective in your clothes in your yeah. overall just creative realm is very inspiring to me i sometimes i look at things and i say oh god i don't know but yeah. <laughs> i think in your, <laughs> i think in your case you have to look outside of that and you have to find that purpose behind it yeah. so yeah it's very very great so i want to move along to this next question is how would you define your personal style or it may not have to be word for word or maybe things that you could identify with yourself um my my personal style is driven by an emotional connection with everything and every one around me um i express it as like classic street style because i think street well, street style to me is the biggest runway show that you can ever see of course oh you have to quote that put that For on the real, like you yeah. know like it's so much is so much is so much flavor so much energy so much culture that you can see on the street with different people walking and i always you go back to being in new york being in the city and just standing up like like i urge everyone to try this when you go to the city stand up st like st like stay stay still stay in a stillness and just look at everybody just passing and then you you can see like personalities attitudes yes. silhouettes colors culture expression so it street style is me and i am street style and i think i'm in a movie and everyone has rules including myself and we get to pick our our costumes and our characters costumes so i would say street style is my is me <laughs> Wonderful. I I love that. I love all that you said because I think that with your you you knowing your personal style and how that identifies as, you know, within what you do is just truly amazing. And I will try that that one day. Hopefully I don't get bumps down. But <laughs> hopefully you you start you're standing on the pavement and you have nothing to do a fat like a like in rush hour or yeah. probably like afternoon time you just mm -hmm. you just sit down or you stand up and you just look at everyone and you'll be so inspired yes yeah. i totally agree i will definitely do that so moving along to our next question is what was your first job in fashion and how did that shape your career now um my first job in fashion I have my points <laughs> <laughs> um my first job in fashion uh was in Trinidad um it was a clothing boutique called Urban Dynasty Designs it was a boutique that i i started um after high school yeah um i studied business in high school so i think like 
I had like at that time and it was the knowledge that I had, I thought that well, I, I thought that I was like capable of, of running a store and knowing exactly and using it as a test. Because in life everything is a test. Nothing yes. is very literal. You just learn until from you from when you're born to when you die, you just learn. So um it was Urban Dynasty Designs. It targeted young men and young women, age groups between 16 to 25. And it was my first introduction to fashion. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's really exciting. So when you, when you were at that time there, do you think that with that experience, with you being there, were you able to kind of say, for example, now with you having your online website, are you able to still be able to let's say, identify those age groups and say, hey, I know how to market to this age group. I know how to yeah. market to that age group. Right, yeah. right. And the, I think that's so important. Yes, excuse me, go ahead. Yeah, it was the... Um, I, I don't, I don't be, I believe that things in life doesn't just happen. You know what I mean? I think that when I opened that store, that boutique, it was preparing me for my present time. It was it was just preparing me for my present time. Okay. And I think that it being a test, the boutique being like a test and like like ASAP Rocky testing, like everything in life is a test. It allowed me to to identify easily um, with target market audience, um, product. Uh, drop dates, yes. campaigns, video shoots, photo shoots, models, height, proportions, physique. It really like it was my test, and it really allowed me to to develop. Right, right, wonderful. And I love that with you said that it preparing you for your time now. So kind of giving you that experience to that global perspective, so you could mm -hmm. be able to continue. And still, and continue building upon that in your current business now. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Um, one other question is: When did you realize you wanted to pursue a career in as a fashion designer? Um, that would have to be my first ever collection line slash line. I I don't I don't know what it what it was, but. Um, well, everything has a story. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I like, it's a, it's I like, an interesting story. I never hear a bad Trini story yet. <laughs> yeah, everything has a story. I, um, well, I had this store at that time, and it it was doing like it was doing good. It was growing, right? Because I did like I was experimenting and marketing and merchandising and stuff. So I was trying to find out that you know, as you Trini say, that sweet spot. Yes. And. Um, one afternoon, I was with a friend of mine at a point that I, a point in time, and I told him like we were driving to Port of Spain, and well, I, I as you know, like Trinidad has these amazing sunsets. Oh yeah. When we get these amazing sunsets, so you know, while driving, I you know, idea popped in my head. My, my brain is always is always going, so it, it popped into my head, and I was like. I want to do a line of shorts, right? And at that time, I don't want to give too much away. I want to wait for the other questions. So I, I wanted to do a line of shorts, and I wanted to, to do a line of linen shorts. And, but not short shorts, but like uh, right above the knee shorts. That was like the silhouette at that time. Nobody was wearing like much short short. Men wasn't wearing like much short short right. shorts, you know. And it had like this beautiful sunset, and I could remember the colors. It was blue, green, orange, purple, pink. Wow! Like these hues. And this name popped into my head: the Boulevard, you know, the Boulevard Collection. Oh. So. I want, so I was like, I have to do this. I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't have no, at that point, that particular, at that point in time, I had no knowledge of fashion design, garment construction, only influence. Right. I used to read a lot of GQ magazines, 
Um, I had a mentor at that time. It was just based on conversations we were having, and you know, he was like educating me in different things about style and stuff. So the Boulevard Collection was a resort collection that was heavily influenced by my mentor at that time, um, Sean Griffith Perez. Shout out, Sean. Um, and yeah, it was a. It was. It it consisted of five pieces. Wow. Yeah. That's so exciting. And I think that's, uh, like you mentioned, that's one thing I, I know I miss here. It's those Trinidad sunsets are very nice. I think when you when you see one again, take a picture, share with everybody. <laughs> so yeah. those people who are not familiar could be able to understand. But I think that is such a great inspirational story. And I want to mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm very proud of you for seeing that ability to say, you know what, this is something I want to do. And it was just not a thought. You acted upon it. You ended mm -hmm. up studying at FIT. You ended up doing now a um, yeah. show at Ooh. Tobago Fashion Week. So you applied that dream into reality and made physical approaches to mm -hmm. act towards your goals and your dreams. And I think that is so inspirational because sometimes mm -hmm. we get intimidated by just the thought, like you mentioned, how am I going to do this? So, Boy, I don't know, but you know, no, you, yeah. you made it work. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, that's really great. So that's follow up to my next question is, how does your Caribbean heritage influence your brand and even yourself? Um, Trinidad, Trinidad, Trinidad. Uh, I, well, grew, while growing up in Trinidad, I always felt a connection with the culture now. Um, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> I, always, I always felt a connection with the culture and carnival. And mind you, I was born in Brooklyn and I didn't have no introduction. Like my mother kept me away from carnival and you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. But when I came, the culture and the carnival and tongue Port of Spain, you know, I, 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 rem I remember like my mother Carrie, she, I guess when we, when we came and we were more living here, certain things that she felt strongly about started to like regress, I guess. And she, at that, at that time, we used to sell stuff, buy and sell. So we would go to the carnival like, like much many years ago. We would go to the carnival and we would sell in the carnival. And I remember, I'll never forget it, I remember seeing all this color, all the shapes. And at that time, uh, Peter Mencho was oh, like, yeah. is the best, in my opinion. But yeah. I remember seeing so much of Mencho's stuff and the storytelling. Yes. Like, I can't get over storytelling. It, storytelling is such a big influence on Nina. And being able to articulate whatever it is. And it really, it like, can't, like, carnival really influenced me where color and shapes is concerned. Yes. And the whole costume design element right you know yeah and i i love that story because even for myself i think carnival is a big big thing in my life i i could definitely relate with you because i could say uh, growing up i felt that i participated in kitty carnival but mm -hmm. i never get a chance to see big people carnival until it's, of yeah, course you know that was my, that's a different story, story of my life so, so I, as I, I got older, I really, yeah. So as I got older and really understanding, wow, the colors and like you mentioned, just being able to see that history behind it and what it stands for is truly really inspiring. And I know for myself, I've always loved bright colored clothes. I love bright hues. I'm always attracted towards that. And even I want to say the Caribbean um, overall, the nature when you see the yeah. flowers and different things like that, the mountains. Those mm -hmm. things are in, those things draw from that overall Caribbean experience and heritage and i i um when, when we left when we left new york when we left brooklyn it was a 
it was like a hot and cold situation where it was like concrete jungle meets actual jungle now. Like for like at that time it was just forest trees. It was like the roads wasn't even, you know, developed. The roads hadn't been developed yet. So it was like a it was like fast and very, very, very slow now. Yes. So yeah, it it, it really it played a part in my development and my creative eye and being able to sit still and look at things that people would just take for granted and pass regularly on yeah i agree i agree wow thank you for sharing that with us yeah. uh, another good question that i think is really relevant to your career is uh what mistakes did you make when you first started as a designer oh my god where to begin <laughs> <laughs> um and I hope everyone's listening. This is very important. The mistakes I made, mistakes I made was thinking that it would have been the same as in the textbooks. Um, thinking that theory in the, in the textbooks would be the same as, you know, actually being in the field. Um, you know, dealing with, like in school, uh, research it doesn't really teach you how to deal with different personalities of course yeah and that is very important um uh textbooks don't give you practical steps it's more like a guideline you know what i mean um that first hand and hands-on experience is totally different um another mistake that everyone makes including myself at that time and I'm not like totally over it mentally. It's self doubt. Yeah. Self doubt killed more people than people did. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, self doubt, believe in yourself, no, or not believing in myself at that time. Because, you know, we would go through emotions in life and we would, we, we would have our invincible moments and then we would have that, those self doubt moments. And it's, those self, I, when that happens, when, when you start to doubt yourself is when you need to persevere and you need to push through. Yeah. Um, so self-doubt and um, allowing too much influences uh, around your creative mind. Uh, allowing too much, in, allowing too many influences around the creative mind of God now because we are all connected. We, are all, we all get downloads. Um, in our minds and our hearts to do things, to move and to act on things. Um, I remember when I was in the transition of um, doing one of one pieces for clients. Right. And venturing off into retail, uh, make retail uh, making it much more available to people, to the public. Um, and you know that the brand would like be developed and I would be you know getting more traction, more income faster. Right. So during that time of transition, I I've been a bit too open where yeah. I had like a lot of people, not a lot of people, but hand I hand picked certain people to be a part to be a part because of their experience and they've been right. um, there before and I was just now coming into it and I was like, you know what, I need to be around people that have been there. Right. And where that may, may be good, it, it also allowed elements and energies to, to shift my energy oh, and yeah. what I wanted to do personally. Right. And, it's very mentally frustrating to know within yourself what you want to do and what God is telling you to do. And then somebody else yes. is coming and telling you, no, they do it like this. Stop. Do it like this. And these are the steps. And these, this is what you should do. And then you have that spirit and you're telling you, no, nah, that's contradicting your calling. Or like that's contradicting the energy. Right. And that was one of my biggest mistakes. It's a um, self-doubt created me. Well, self-doubt allowed me to have 
other influences around because I didn't believe in me. And I felt that I needed to have these experienced people around. Wow. You know what I mean? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And I want to say that I think that lesson that you just told us, that can apply to a lot of things in life and not yeah. even into fashion design because it's very important. Oh, we see some comments. Hello. Hi, everybody that's coming in. Hey. Hello. Hi. I think that is very important to what you said because even the other day, I don't know, um, today I posted a caption and it was very different from what I normally post. It said something like, you know, when I first started blogging, I was afraid to even think about the idea of fashion because, again, uh, I was afraid and I didn't think I had no experience to talk about fashion. And self-doubt is, a, like you said, self-doubt is a thing that kills more people than anybody and you really have to believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I think that believing in yourself and wanting more for yourself can only give you this confidence that nobody cannot touch, no matter who they are, how powerful, what kind of influence they see that confidence in you and that confidence will just drive you further. Yeah. It's like, I remember um, my mother would always tell me when I was younger, the God within will never lead you where his grace can't keep you now. So if you get, if you have, I'm telling everybody who, well, everybody who's tuned in right now, if you have something inside you that's burning to come out, that's God planting a seed in your heart, in your mind to move. And never forget that he wouldn't plant a seed. God is not a sadistic person or being. Right. Person. He's not going to plant a seed within you that he know you're going to fail at this level. Exactly. You know what I mean? So like, bear that in mind. Wow, thank you for that reminder because I feel that especially everything that's been going on um, in the chain of events with all of the illnesses we've seen with COVID and so many different things that we've seen as a monumental movement within Black people, I think we have to really pay attention to the times and pay attention to ourselves, like you said, and pay attention to the signs that we come across daily. And I love that message that you were able to share with us because I think that really opened up a new perspective to all of us and everybody that's watching, and I will have the highlights so everybody that's going to watch this in the future as well will say, wow, you know what? It's a reason. It's a reason why we're getting these signs and it's a yeah. reason why these things are happening because like you mentioned, it's definitely a sign from within, from God himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So I do want to uh, move on to this next question is, if you could collaborate with a celebrity, who would it be and what would you design? Mm. Wow. Um, I have two people in mind that I would like to work with, to collab with, um, ASAP Rocky being one person, one of the two, um, because he's, he's like super unpredictable with his style and, you know, he's both eccentric and clean cut at yes. the same time. So it's like. It's like me, you know, like street style. It's like you don't know what's coming, but it's just a personality, a vibration, right. an emotion that is that is being put forth in style and presentation. Um, well, to me, it's perfect style aesthetic, uh, ASAP Rocky. And Jeffrey, Young Thug. Oh, wow. Drip, Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Um, saga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh gosh, like, people need to, like, people need to, people need to pay their homage, bro, like, that, that, that brothers, he is, he, I could sense that he moves with the spirit within. Yes. I don't know, I, that's for me, that's, that's in my opinion. Um, I remember he wore this piece from... Let me see if I could pronounce it. He's from it Italy. Um, it was uh, Alessandro Trincon. Okay. Um, he did this dress. And it was featured on V-Files Crowd Surf. Um, it was a fashion show in 2016. And it was just in layer and the whole aesthetic. It, it, it felt it, it was like this, this, this Japanese-inspired dress. Thing oh, that, yes. 
it took the way it took the airwaves and everybody was like buzzing about it man. and he wore it he wore the piece not everybody could could like wear something and represent it and when i saw him like when he did the shoot and when i saw the piece actually coming down yes um the purple one um when i is <laughs> um i think it's white and blue when he when i saw that coming on the runway it was amazing it was it it screamed culture no but it screamed aesthetic and it was it was where i where my mind was at where my mind is is like ex, like experimenting and really pushing boundaries of fashion and layering and silhouette and right. aesthetic so those two people are speaking it into the universe um i would like to do a collab with them hopefully a lucrative collab with them yes and i i definitely believe it will happen like you said we're thinking positive of it and speaking it into existence yeah. one thing i do want to add with that is that both um um both artists that you mentioned they they're not afraid to take risk they not just they're not safe with their approach by only wearing blues grays white neutral colors they are just wearing things that just applies to them very mm -hmm. stepping out of the ordinary and mm -hmm. i think uh i was watching i was reading some carl lagerfield and he said that trendy is one step away from tacky and it mm -hmm. never <laughs> they're mm -hmm. never trendy they are the ones that are are setting statements i guess you could say yeah <laughs> The setting statement. I know that we're getting kind of close to time because I know you have some um, prior commitments, and I don't want to keep. I, you I think we. I think we can extend. I think we can extend. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Because we only have a few more questions here, yeah. which are almost done. Which are yeah. what obstacles? Um, what obstacles have you faced as a designer? Um, the obstacles that I I have faced uh, when I started in uh, when I would say about twenty twelve was lack of financial capital and industry experience. I think that um, it would be obstacles for anyone um, that has like a new idea, a new business, a new brand, and you really have the um, you know, projection which they see for their brand. Yes. And lack of capital, lack of finance, not having um, a financial backing or institution to really invest. Is very frustrating. Yes. Um, and industry experience, uh, hence um, me opening the, the boutique at that age mm -hmm. to really like figure it out. And that was a blessing that I was that was that I was allowed to do that, and yes. I had the means to, to get that done. Um, so I would say that 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 was the obstacles that I faced. Wow. And I, th and I thank you for sharing that with us because I think sometimes, especially with Instagram, people are so conditioned to think everything is an instant story, like nobody mm -hmm. in build nothing from the ground up. It just happened overnight. And, you know, there are struggles. There are things that may not be have mentioned as far as um, days where you're concerned or days where you're just so unaware of what's going to happen next. So I think it is very uh, realistic to bring highlight to obstacles and struggles and our fears so we know how to move forward from them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yes. Uh, one of my other following questions that is really interesting is, what is your favorite part of being a fashion designer? Um, my favorite part um, is being able to tell my story. Okay. Um, and build an emotional connection with my customer um, through collections and presentation. I, as I said before, I like storytelling. Um, I like, you know, being able to articulate what's happening here. Right. And getting it out and just the joy of seeing someone. Oh, I get it now. Like, yes, I get it. It's right. yeah. It's one of my favorite parts. Amounts like photo shoots and all the glitz and stuff, yeah. and the shows and the backstage and the whole, you know, yes, niceness. But <laughs> um, just being able to build an emotional connection with the people that come into contact with your brand, with my brand, 
that's my favorite part of being a designer. And that's very inspiring to hear because I, in my opinion, I feel that fashion is like a, a second language. It's yeah. a second language that you could be able to express, you know, nobody gonna have to speak the same language as you, but it's something, it's expression of who you are. And it's either you get it or not. And I'm not saying not as in, oh, you can't have personal style. I'm saying it not as in, you know, you don't have to resort to just sticking yourself to wear one thing and just doing one thing. You could, you're open to try. There's no rules in fashion. You're there's no right or wrong way. Yeah, there's no rules. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody, uh, fashion police ain't going to come knocking by your door. Hello. <laughs> and if they come knocking, just go let them in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They're saying they're not home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is a really nice question as well. What advice would you give to someone who will want to seek a career as a fashion designer? The advice I would give, uh, do your research. Um, ask yourself the right questions. Um, do your research, plan your approach. Um, remember to give yourself a chance to fail. Don't beat yourself down. Like, give yourself a chance to fail. That's how you learn. That's how you finesse. That's how you tweak and adjust and improve. Um, remember, everyone's journey is different. Right. Somebody could blow up overnight by word of mouth. And then somebody could blow up by over the period of five years just by being in the right place at the right time now. There's no right or wrong way. There's no right or wrong introduction to fashion. Um, just, re just remember that there's no right or wrong way. Yeah. That you know, you know, there's none. There's no right or wrong way. Just don't beat yourself up. Plan your approach. Do your research. Ask yourself the right questions. What it is I'm trying to achieve with my brand. Who is my target audience? What is my aesthetic? And if you have issues or problems trying to identify that, use yourself as a, as a test study, what you like to wear, what you like, where do you like to shop? Um, and you, you start to build, you start to build your notes and you're able to um, start to narrow down your approach now. Um, what, is, what, what is your favorite colors? What, type of silhouettes you like to wear. Boxy stuff, fitted stuff, sexy stuff, um, androgynous things. Um, it, all, it all revolves around you. Your, your brand should represent you and what you like and how well you are able to articulate or to, 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 to share your story through your clothes, your product, your merchandise. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that information with us because I think that um, the information that you just shared was just great. It was top notch. I feel that people could spend millions of dollars just to hear this information right now, seriously, because it was very well articulated. And I think it's very important that you have to understand who you are if you want yeah. to be able to expand on a brand or even have, you know, even create something. You can't just create something and say, oh, wait, what is it? Well, I don't know. I thought you would know. <laughs> you want to be able to know that and have that solid background so you could be able to build upon that. And I think one of the most important things that you said that I truly love was give yourself a chance to fail. And yeah. I think that sometimes a lot of us, we're looking for the elevator to success. And we seen the stairs, and we're like, well, boys, a hot day. We didn't want to take the stairs. We don't even want to look at it. But just... <laughs> it's too much work. Yeah. But you got to do work. Anything. You got to put in your work. You got to put in your work and have fun. Like, have fun with it. Have fun. Like, sometimes, like, you know, like, remember when everybody got on a bike for the first time they fell? And you feel... You, you, you get bruised up, sometimes you don't get bruised up, sometimes you get a cut, you get a gash. Dust yourself up and get back on it again and just know that that moment has passed. Look of forward course. for new moments. 
Yeah, this is so this is so good. This is so inspiring. Oh, wonderful. And one of the last questions that I have, and at this time, you can take some uh, questions from the audience. Please make sure to drop your questions in the comments so um, we could be able to uh, read them off. But one of my last questions I have to you is, how can we continue to support your brand today? Um, you can visit your website. Uh, I always tell people that... Uh, existing clients, cost new customers, onlookers, um, feedback is necessary because once I am able to hear feedback, I'm able to, you know, tweak, not change, but adjust. And um, so subscribe to our, our newsletter um, follow us on social media platforms and support the sales. We do have sales at certain points. Um, I, the brand tends to be, um, what's the word? Um, and I don't want to take too time, too much time to, no, you know, no, no, to no, figure no. it out, but no. <laughs> it's. No. When we do, when I do sales, it's it it has it, it's at any given time. So like, pay attention and and see like, okay, so this 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 thing might go on sale like twelve o'clock tonight. You know what I mean? Like, support the sales. Um, look out for discount um codes. Um, the support goes a long way. Like across the board, like follows, likes, comments. Comments are necessary. Um, it it allows me to really build an intimate connection with everyone um and yeah just support show love show love just show mad love exactly. mad, mad, mad love as i was saying show love is the brooklyn way yeah show love. <laughs> wonderful thank you so much william a round of applause i want everybody to drop some likes hearts whatever it may be for william for him for even taking out his time today i mean being a busy designer, having so many different things, just taking an hour out of your time, speaking with me, getting to know a little bit more about yourself, your brand, and being able to continue to support you. So please, everybody, make sure to drop some love in the comments for William. And again, like you've mentioned, visit his website, view his things, be able to support the sales on the actual website, follow him, give him that feedback because it means so much more as a designer so he could be able to have that intimate connection like he mentioned. So please, as I encourage all of my audience members to really support the brand, support him, and just really show love as he mentioned. It was a pleasure to speak with you this evening. I had such a great time. I'm looking forward to coming back to Trinidad. We can discuss this over World Castle. Soon, <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. Soon. So that should be so exciting. I'm just so proud of you. And I'm proud of how you're taking so many risks to just make sure to have your brand the best as possible. And you're just out here killing it despite the pandemic. Ain't nothing stopping you. <laughs> nothing can stop me. Yes. Nothing can stop us. Yes, nothing, nothing else. else. So I'm going to um, leave the floor for one more question, if anybody mm -hmm. have any questions, anything. If not, I will end it here because I know um, it's, uh, it's it's still the same time in Trinidad, right? Yes, uh, 54 past. Oh, okay. Minutes now minutes every minute there. something changed in here, so I'm too sure. <laughs> huh? So yeah. I don't see any other questions, as I will end the interview. And please, if you have any questions or not, come back. I have the highlights. Highlights. Make sure to follow William. And William, thank you again so much for your time. We will keep in touch. It was a pleasure talking with you. I think we should do a part two. I think maybe six <laughs> months from now, let's do a part two. Yeah. <laughs> When you I, get yeah, yeah, we, we, we can we can make it happen. Yes, when you get the collaboration with Young Thug and you're able to tell us, well, boy, oh this is what happened. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you so much again. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And make sure to come back and share these lives, okay? Bye. All right. Bye. bye. Good night again, Thanks. William. Thank you. All right, bye.